welcome to our show in conversation today we have with us shri t k ramachandran he is currently posted as secretary shipping ports and waterways to the government of india he is from 1991 batch indian administrative service officer of tamil nadu cadre with more than 32 years of experience in public policy administration and governance he is public policy expert with specialization in infrastructure and logistics management urban development energy environment and climate change e governance education culture and heritage welcome to our show sir thanks a lot it's a pleasure to be with you this morning thank you th- th- thank you sir sir today we wish to focus on our conversation on india maritime center as many industry experts believe that this may be the game changer for the maritime industry so with this i take the liberty to start sir can you provide an overview of the india maritime center sir yeah so i'd like to start by describing the, the overall scenario the port shipping and port based scenario in the country as you are aware there has been tremendous growth over the last decade or so and the honorable prime minister released the maritime amritkal vision we were one of the first departments or the ministries to come out with this vision as far back as october 23 and which was released by the honorable prime minister during the global maritime india summit and yes, in this we have laid out a vision for different sectors within the domain maritime uh, domain and that includes ports it includes infrastructure it includes uh, waterways and shipping now shipping as you know has many uh, facets ship building and ship repair and recycling and uh, flagging financing insurance and then ownership leasing chartering etc you know that's a large area similarly ports you know whether it's infrastructure or movement of uh, uh, vessels and the necessary facilitation the ease of doing business etc that's again a huge sector and then waterways we have only had yes. five waterways initially and uh, six waterways and that went up to 111 national waterways so the sector yes. entire sector is huge is growing and each of and we have several stakeholders as you are aware you know port owners there are terminal operators then there are the government ports there are the private ports and in the shipping industry you have ship ownership leasing uh, entities then uh, those who build ships ship yards and so on similarly waterways is again a huge sector where there are people who you know do cruise vessels some some people who run the uh, you know the terminals at the various uh, waterways and so on so there was a need felt uh, to bring all stakeholders under one umbrella and uh, this is what the imc is conceptualized as this is an umbrella organization that will bring all stakeholders and under one single uh, into in a uh, single forum now the thing is there are associations you know there is the ship ship building uh, association indian uh, the ship owners association similarly there is the uh, private port terminals association then there is uh, you know there are so many of these associations each of them is basically comprised of a set of people with common interests now when we go out when we go out into the uh, you know when we go represent india in international fora there is a need for a common voice of the entire maritime industry which does not only restrict itself to a particular sub domain within this sector so we thought we'll bring all of them so this is an actually the indian maritime cluster is an association of associations apart from individual members so this will be an umbrella organization which will represent the voice of all these stakeholders it will help in coordination and it will help in giving us feedback and also industry's voice will be heard different industries voice will be heard through this forum excellent initiative sir uh, i can say this on behalf of all the stakeholders of the industry sir can you please share with us the milestones achieved by imc so far yeah so we have uh, uh, you know as as i said in the maritime amritkal vision this is one of the major uh, you know sub components uh, putting the indian maritime sector in place so we formed a task force sometime in uh, january 
and the task force comprises many uh, stakeholders their representatives and they have given us an approach paper and we are working on that and maybe in a few uh, weeks or so we hope to be able to launch this honorable minister is also keen to ensure that this is launched at the earliest and uh, under his guidance and uh, leadership we are working so that within the 100 days of the current government we will be able to uh, convert this vision into reality right sir uh, sir you talked about that these all associations there should be a, a umbrella where they can be represented so this brings me to my next question how does the imc plan to strengthen india's participation in the international maritime organization and other important global maritime forums yeah so as you are aware the imo has several uh, committees under it each of them looking at particular aspects of the maritime domain yes there is the uh, you know there is something related to the safety then there is something related to pollution the mepc and then uh, for the seafarers welfare then the fal which looks at the uh, the processes and then legal committee and so on so there are several committees which look at and there are a large number of conventions and each of them is very specialized so when we go to imo as a nation we need to be very well prepared as to what is our nation's uh, you know what are our priorities and how do these priorities get reflected in these international organizations and whether we are able to bring to bear upon them our own ideas views and priorities so imc is you know it, it, we have a three pronged approach one is we require to have a robust collaboration with these international organizations and for that the imc can be a tool the second thing is advocacy so a lot of our industries needs and priorities we need to you know prepare a forum for advocacy and if that doesn't happen as you know if we don't advocate our own priorities and you know requirements then we end up having to follow those of the others therefore Absolutely we need to be able to advocate uh, to, to have a forum for advocacy so we expect that this platform will become a, a platform for advocacy of india's uh, priorities and thirdly we require to have expert and advisory services now you know as you are aware all wisdom cannot be housed within the government we need to consult and of course we are consulting individual stakeholders separately and we will continue to do so we will continue to engage with individual stakeholders their association but we also sometimes need the entire body of stakeholders to be able to tell us what is their priority when it comes to the international forum where we need to speak with one voice so i think the third thing is that we will be able to get this kind of expert analysis and advisory services from this kind of a sector that's very very well thought of sir uh, sir here uh, since you mentioned about uh, there are so many actually sub groups also can you elaborate on that can you elaborate on specific sub groups formed within the task force yeah basically these are sub groups formed so that we can conceptualize the imc uh, since it's at an infancy stage so the first sub group looks at outreach ensuring that there is full participation and that more members can be onboarded so uh, so the first group uh, sub group looks at outreach the next looks at infrastructure after all if you have a center like this you need to house it somewhere so the next uh, sub group looks at infrastructure and lastly we have a group looking at process and procedure which will you know basically broaden the uh, uh, the operation operationalization the funding etc so we have group three to look at the operations of the Uh, sir what is the progress on these sub groups like in terms of infrastructure and operationalization of these sub groups can you update us with the progress yeah so so basically as you are aware for any institution to be set up there are legal uh, you know targets to be uh, legal uh, requirements to be fulfilled similarly there are financial requirements then there are procedural requirements and then you need infrastructure so all these are now almost in place i think we will uh, we have identified the initial members who will form the is it's conceptualized i think as a society 
so which means uh, initially about uh, seven or ten members joined together and formed the society and then they onboard different members over a period of time uh, it is expected to be completed within a, a month or so the registration process is on similarly the, the funding of the, uh, the basically it have to be crowd funded by all the stakeholders apart from the associations individual industries will also be members the membership format has also been uh, has been uh, designed and the the subscription the annual subscription has also been arrived at and therefore we expect that and the office space has also been identified so we expect that within a month like i said within 100 days of this government which is mid september uh, we will i think be ready to launch it oh that that's really quick sir yeah uh, that that, uh, that that's like music to the ears that's really great uh, so that brings me to my next actually uh, question what flagship events does the imc plan to conduct to build a strong global brand for the indian maritime sector we are aware that you have been your ministry has been doing uh, this in the past you had uh, maritime india conclave maritime india conferences so can you please elaborate more on that sir yeah so So, Honorable Prime Minister uh, has always been saying that you know all these conferences, summits, etc., should be the initiatives of the private sector, you know, and we should participate in it rather than driving it ourselves. But initially, uh, for a few years, last decade, we have been conducting it, of course, in partnership with organizations like FICI, CIA, etc. But what we thought was there is a need for a maritime organization. to be brought on board and this imc will fulfill that uh, you know that uh, uh, aspiration and uh, the maritime stakeholders when they get together obviously you know they can design and deliver a very nice conference jo apna lenge wo apna ke they will be able to deliver it rather than come in as you know uh, uh, outsiders who are trying to help in uh, conducting such conferences and jab wo apna lete hain so then obviously you know there is a huge network that they will uh, try to uh, you know use from across the world and this network whether you know whether it's in uh, shipping or whether it's in ports or terminals this network will then become activated and it will help us conduct these events very successfully and with good participation most important with good participation and to ensure that you know this these conferences help to bring in the right inputs for our policy making as well as you know ensure that our programs are successfully delivered so the uh, global maritime india summit the cruise conferences we have a number of conferences being conducted by different boards etc uh, you know in isolated manner across the country now we can all be brought under one banner and we can do it with the uh, participation and help of every single stakeholder that's the so that, that, that's wonderful sir and that actually looks like public private partnership even exactly. events so but so here one more thing is very very important which actually uh, also is the aim of every conference and that is networking when we talk about networking here what the indian uh, stakeholders would probably like is networking with their foreign counterparts in terms of investment in as you mentioned ship building ports and shipping so uh, what kind of networking opportunities can be created here so i think any such organization requires to you know have aims which they themselves set and the sky is the limit so because you are setting your aims you are setting your goals and objectives this means you can the entire like i said disguise the limit so starting from representing india in the in the international fora whether it's imo it can be uh, you know so many other like imac or bimstech or bbin you know there are so many such or the, and the corridors the eastern maritime corridor the Uh, the north south transport corridor international north instc north south transport corridor so each of these corridors involves a number of countries a number of stakeholders there are exim uh, you know uh, traders there are those who are uh, exporters importers in all these countries then the like you said there are the ship builders there are the ship owners there are there are those who finance ships insurance of ships and then there are people require seafarers to be uh, you know employed then there are uh, uh, arbitration uh, you know centers to be formed then of course ship building repair and recycling 
the the entire shipping industry similarly ports and terminals similarly uh, the waterways in all these cases there are a lot of technology being developed green green shipping is an entirely new vertical you no know, it's coming in a big way so for all this for networking without networking people do not know what we are doing in fact i had a team coming in from a country from a different country a few days back and they said we are not even aware of what is happening in india you know some people still think that we are you know not, not into the latest technologies so uh, uh, and now we are exporting you might be uh, surprised to know that we are exporting electric hybrid vessels to europe similarly Absolutely. from our cochin shipyard from our garden yes. shipyard and so on so which means we have the technology people are not aware so a forum like this with multiple stakeholders representing multiple interests will help us to network across the world bring in the right technology bring in finances and funding if required and ensure that and bring in research and development initiatives plus also help our people to understand what is happening in the world so i think the possibilities are immense and really exciting uh, if you <laughs> if i can call it that uh, th- that gives hope sir that's very nice and that was the purpose of uh, this interview so that we get more clarity about imc so one last question uh, since you have already actually uh, informed us everything about imc last question we understand that you are, you are in discussion with the shipping corporation of india for furnishing an infrastructure requirement can you please tell us like how long do you expect that uh, imc to set up its own uh, office yeah so since mumbai is the maritime city of india you know the commercial capital so we expect the imc or we are pr- proposing that the imc be set up in mumbai at the mti campus there and uh, there there is some lovely space available so initially it will start off there till we of course finalize a location uh, a permanent location somewhere but initial operations will happen at the mdi campus uh, in uh, mumbai sir thank you very much there has been so much clarity and uh, it's very clear that what we want to achieve and once it is uh, once actually the goal is known uh, a country and our society our industry can achieve it under your leadership thank you very much for your time sir thank you so much thank you thank you sir